Thank you. Say what you want about their comic book live action films, but if it's one thing Warner Brothers knows how to do right, it's kiddie movies. This movie's about this orphan. When he was a little baby, his parents abandoned him on accident when they died to death. That type of traumatic event could either make you a hero like Batman or make you a villain like Killmonger. So the boy treads carefully. The hero turned a negative into a positive and he let his origin story fuel him and he joined forces with a bunch of teenagers with attitude to protect the world from evil forces. The ragtag group of misfits includes the orphan the girl who's skilled in dark magic, the boy who needs some milk, and the pet that could shapeshift. We get an example of the main character's powers in the beginning when he's battling a balloon villain. When you watch his power, at first you think he's special, but in reality, all the kids are special in this movie. And just like Syndrome from The Incredible said, when everyone's special, no one will be. Things take a turn for the worse when a villain is on the loose. While the criminal is on the run, the kid is suffering from these horrible visions and can't help but think that the two are connected. The logical thing would be to tell an adult, but the children in the movie have trust issues with the grown men in the film because the men are always acting one way in public, but another way in the dark. But anyways, his friends and roommates try to cheer him up and serve as a great distraction to his stressful problems in his personal life. The main characters may be children, but they're mature beyond their years. You expect kids this age to be dealing with normal teenage problems, like learning how to balance their extracurricular activities or playing pranks on adults. They do stuff like that, but they always find time to juggle more grown-up activities like fighting evil. To catch the villain, the teenagers are going to have to be quick on their feet and use all of their resources. Speaking of resources, some of the gadgets in the movie include the invisible thingy one of the heroes uses to get around. And another useful piece of tech is the tracking device the main kid uses to locate the bad guy. He locates the villain, but when he arrives to the destination, he's too late and the bad guy gets away again. With no adult supervision in sight, this is where the kids act up like they don't have any home training. One of the kids has a time traveling device. The team agrees to use it to save lives, but also ruin a couple of lives in the process. Suddenly, the kid blacks out. He's either dehydrated or has a bad drug habit we don't know about because that came out of nowhere. When he wakes up, nothing makes any type of sense. His mentor is out of his mind and tries to kill him. Later on in the fight, the main kid probably would have died if it wasn't for his bird friend jumping in to save the day. The battle is brought to a screeching halt when the black cloak creature and the rest of the dark cold beings fill the air, and that's when the good guys get the hell out of Dodge. The kids defeat the bad guy and they save the adults at the end. With a flick of the wrist, the girl uses magic to free the adult hero who has been trapped. This is special because after this, the boy and his guardian share a special moment when his mentor shows him love for all of the hard work that he's done in this installment. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comments section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>